We're in Windows Server 2019 beta, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner. It's build 17.623. And I'm going to show you how to promote this server to be a domain controller. Let's go ahead and click on Add Roles and Features in Server Manager. And we will go ahead and install our Active Directory domain services. Now you want to make sure that, well, let's go back a second, make sure that the server name is correct that you want and the IP address is correct. If it's set to DHCP, then you want to make it a static IP first. We'll go ahead and click Next, and we'll click Install. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and check the network IP settings here. I want to make sure that your DNS is set correctly as well. So click on Change Adapter Settings, TCP IP 4, and make sure you're not only using a static IP address at the top, but that your preferred DNS server is pointing back to itself. So this is the first domain controller in your domain. You're creating a new forest, then make sure it's pointing at itself. If it's a second or third or additional domain controller, then you can point it to one of the other domain controllers. Now, sometimes after you join or make a server a domain controller, you're going to see this address in the DNS server settings, and that's fine. That means the same thing to the server. It's just called the loopback address. So that means the same as the, the IP address that you see here. Let's go ahead and click OK on all that. Make sure it does not point to any public DNS, such as Google's 8888 or Comcast or anything else. It's got to point back to itself only, not to itself and to a public address. So what we do is what's called DNS forwarding in order to get out to the Internet after we set up Active Directory, which I'll show you in a little bit. And it's all done. Now we can click the Promote the Server to be a Domain Controller right here, or we can go ahead and click Close, and we can just go to the triangle at the top in case we missed that little link. So we'll click on Promote the Server to be a Domain Controller, and let's get rid of the update message. And we're going to create a new domain controller in uh, in a whole, I'm sorry, we're going to create a whole new forest. So basically, if you're adding another domain controller, then you choose this top one. Um, if you're going to uh, add a new forest, then you'll choose this one. Now, if you're adding a new uh, domain, such as a child domain, then you choose the middle one. But we're going with a brand new forest, and we're just going to call it test.internal, just to keep it simple. And we'll click Next. And we're, this is the password that we're going to use for disaster recovery mode for Active Directory. So we'll just go ahead and use the same password. And as far as the forest functional level goes, um, when it says Windows Server, it refers to Windows Server 2019. Um, when you have 2012, 2008, etc., cetera, um, then those are you know, older versions as well. However, at this time, Microsoft's not showing any difference between 2016 and 2019 when it comes to the forest functional level. I'm sure at a, at a future date that will change. And we'll leave the other uh, options checked and click Next and Next. And it's going to choose the default NetBIOS name, which will probably be test here once it's done. That's uh, just the first part of the name. You can certainly change that to something else if you want, although it does make things confusing if you do. And we'll choose the default next. And as long as we don't get any red X's here, uh, you can safely ignore any yellow exclamation uh, triangles or anything like that, which, of course, you're, you're always going to have. And it looks like our install button is lit up, so we can go ahead and choose install. This part of the procedure should take no more than, say, 5 or 10 minutes. If it takes uh, more than 30 minutes, then you probably have something have, has gone wrong. And you should just cancel out of it, uh, go into your server manager, and go to your tools event logs and or event viewer and see what possibly went wrong in the uh, logs. Now what happens is it's going to automatically restart all on its own, which is fine. So uh, just go ahead and let it restart and then we'll pick it up from there. So when we log back in, instead of logging in as just administrator, we're logging in as test backslash administrator because test is the name of our NetBIOS name, which is part of our uh, fully qualified domain name of test.internal. So what it does is it takes the first part of your uh, fully qualified domain name of test.internal, and it takes that as the uh, NetBIOS name. So basically, the NetBIOS name is just left over from the 1990s in the NT days. And unfortunately, we just haven't been able to get rid of it when it comes to logging in to our server. 
Our domain controller is up for the first time. We'll go ahead and click on Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers, just to make sure that it looks OK. There it is. Test.internal. Domain controller is server 2019. There it is. Looks good. And we do need to make a change to DNS. So if we go to Tools, DNS, then we should be able to see our newly created zones. There they are. Test.internal is the normal zone that gets created when you create Active Directory. And the MSDCS means that it is an Active Directory integrated zone, which means that other domain controllers will replicate with it. So what we need to do now is to right click on the server and go to Properties and then go to Forwarders. And you can see that it's automatically picked up the Comcast uh, DNS servers as the forwarders, but it did it on IPv6. So if you want to add IPv4 in case it's not working the way you want it to, you can do something like that to add Google's in there and just move it up to the top. There we go. And go to interfaces. And what I like to do is to choose only the following interfaces, and I like to exclude the IPv6 ones because not everybody is set up for IPv6 in their network, and it ends up causing problems with this internal FE80 address, which is sort of like a, a private IP address. So we uh, just uncheck that, click OK, and then if you see any addresses listed for those IPv6 ones, then I tend to just delete them. So I'll just go there, hit Delete. You don't want anybody using the IPv6 to do network resolution just in case there's an incorrect entry. And we can do the same thing for this as well. However, I don't see any IPv6 here, so that's good. Go ahead and close that. And just to confirm outside access is working, we'll just go to pull up a command prompt or PowerShell. And we'll just ping Google just to make sure it resolves OK. And it does. So that is installing Active Directory Domain Controller Forest and Domain on a Windows Server 2019.